I've got too many pockets. Um, good morning. Welcome to our service. And um, please stand as we sing our first hymn, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Please sit for our notices. Today there will be two changes in our service. The first is that we'll be taking up a collection in the offertory hymn, which is the hymn after the peace. The second one is that we are reintroducing the common cup for people who would like to partake of it. And I will explain how that will happen just before communion. I would love to tell you that I believe Ron and Judith have raised 356 pounds for the bucking, the, the boxes, I was like old church trust. <laughs> um, so I think that's amazing. They walked 15 miles in one day. <laughs> Next week is a really exciting weekend. And I hope that you are as excited as I am, also a bit nervous about Sunday. Sunday, this is it's gonna be harvest which is wonderful. Please bring gifts for the food bank, but do not bring baked beans. Yes, they have enough baked beans. And I, so next Saturday, this time next week, the big church day in will have happened, which will be really sad, but we have all this week to look forward to it. Put your hand up if you're booked to go. 
Great. Well, if you haven't booked to go, look around and you could go and ask that person if they would also like to come. It's not too late. Um, one thing which would be amazing, um, if you are coming and you'd be willing to help with some of the like setting up and clearing, um, clearing, clearing up, setting up, clearing down, clearing up, setting down, that works, um, then we have a couple of spaces where we could just really do um, with some support and help, but it's actually not that many. Ollie at the back has got some um, clipboards um, with the spaces that need to be filled, and I said to him that there'll be a surge towards him at the end of the service. If you're able to help, then um, please sign up. That would be wonderful. I think... That is it, unless anyone needs to tell me something I've forgotten. No? No, okay. Great. Wonderful. Well, let's just pause for a moment before we say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We respond with our confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have, just, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now please stand as we sing the Gloria together.
please sit and we will join together in saying the words of the collect. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we will have our first reading. A reading from 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 to 7. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of their very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for our next hymn, Songs of Praise the Angels Sang.
<clears throat> Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. The Gospel is Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is a lump of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will love, hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Do please sit. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, um, I think I'm looking out at the faithful here. So you, I think probably all of you have been uh, and listened to the previous three Sundays here. We've gone over our vision worshipping God, making friends, and changing the world. Um, we, we try and repeat it every year because, as Rick Warren says, vision leaks. And uh, normally there's some new faces here, although um, I think I know pretty much everybody here, so apologies if you've heard all this before. But um, next Sunday's Harvest, and of course we will be celebrating, and um, you know if the, if, the, if the day of teaching isn't of interest uh, and the barn dance isn't of interest, I at least hope you can come along for the Harvest Supper. Um, not least because we've ordered food for 100 people and I think there might be quite a bit left over at the moment. Uh, so please do, do come along. Uh, we'll miss you if you are not there. Um, so what is the link between the vision and harvest? And really in a word, it's stewardship. It's how we look after, how we make use of the gifts and the resources as Christians we believe God has put at our disposal. Now I'm going to break the rule. I always tell uh, the preachers here, which is just stick to one passage of scripture uh, and don't kind of introduce others, but I'm going to go against that. And, and I'm just going to say, you probably all remember the parables of um, the parable of the talents, don't you? And or the, they're called gold in, in other translations. So that's in Matthew 25, and in Luke 19, it's the 10 minus. And you know the story that the, the man leaves his servants with different bits of gold, and uh, he tells them to make use of them and grow them while he's away, uh, so that when he returns, there's a return on his investment. And um, you know the story goes that uh, when he does return. Um, one of the servants has done very, very well and has given him a handsome re, uh, re, re return. And, uh, and, and the other sermon is um, the, the, sorry. Just going to pray. We... Heavenly Father, we do pray for Judas right now. Uh, Lord Jesus, would you just... Touch her with your healing hand. Would you restore her? Would you heal whatever is not right and going on right now? And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
I like that military word of command. Carry on. Right, I shall leap back into action. So we were in that parable of the, the talents. And you know, the one who doesn't get a return on the investment is punished. And the scary thing in these, par- the, these both these parables occur at the end of Jesus' ministry in the context of his teaching about the end times. This means that Jesus is telling his listeners, amongst other things, that he's going to be leaving us with gifts And when he returns, he expects to see us having made good use of them. Um, So, if you ponder it, it's actually a very challenging message. So, stewardship, this is the point I'm trying to make, stewardship is something we all need to take seriously. I remember going to uh, Focus uh, one year, Uh, I'd left the army and I was working in London running the family printing business. I was doing Alpha. Uh, My Connect group took it in turns to do hospitality at the end of services. I was helping run Pathfinders at the morning service. Anyway, at this um, conference, I heard the parable. I went to the children's worship with Eleanor and um, this parable of the talents was the drama. And it suddenly struck home to me. Are my gifts being fully used? I love the children's worship and the children's talks. It may be a reflection on the size of my brain, I don't know. But it was quite a seminal moment for me. I mean, yes, I enjoyed a well-paid job. I enjoyed, uh, you know, the company provided gainful employment for many and I made good use of some of my skills. But was I making the most of my talents in God's eyes? Or was God looking on and saying, well, listen, I know you can do this, but you can do so much more to run and, sorry, to grow the kingdom of God. And then later at the same conference, Jackie Pullinger was preaching on the verse, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And suddenly I got knocked by the Holy Spirit again. And then finally, the final kind of confirmatory word for me was I was listening to a seminar in the afternoon uh, from this workplace consultant and he said that the spot where where one finds true fulfillment is where your gifts meet the needs of the world, where that is, there is that overlap. And it was like my eyes were opened and I knew that I had to explore becoming far more involved in growing God's kingdom. So I'm standing before you as someone who I hope is doing a better job of stewarding some of the gifts God gave me that I once was doing. And so the challenge for all of us is are we using our gifts to meet the needs of the world? And of course I'm not just talking about our time, uh, I'm talking about our resources including our finance. Now please believe me when I um, I hate talking about money, uh, particularly to a congregation that has always been so generous, but I'm under instructions from the PCC to do a stewardship campaign every year, and here it is. Now, I want to say, start by saying a huge thank you uh, to all of you who have given so sacrificially and continue to do so. And uh, Judith can't probably... Um, hear what I'm saying at the moment, but every time I walk around the rooms at the back, I remember what was called the Open Doors Project, which uh, some of the people who've been here even longer than I have will remember only too well. And I'm so grateful for that massive act of generosity, which has transformed what we can do here as a church. Um, At our PCC meeting on Tuesday, and by the way, you do have a wonderful PCC, we heard that for obvious reasons, giving has been down, but we're okay because expenditure has been down. Obviously, the ministries haven't been running. Um, But of course, the great news is our ministries are starting off again. They're all happening now. Um, You've seen the young people leave the service. We've got a group for them running now. The Ark is running. Messy Church is about to start. Um, Hot Dog Wednesdays is at full tilt, 120. I probably shouldn't say how many people we had down there, but anyway, it's going extremely well indeed. 
Um, so we do need to, uh, we're, we're starting a return to taking up a collection, the service across all the services today. So I just wanted to say, um, if you can review your giving using the form that you received, that would be fantastic. Um, otherwise, just, just um, you know, perhaps take the form back home and think about it. Even if it's just by raising it by inflation or something, that would be a great um, uh, help to us. Um, if you're not yet giving, um, have a think about doing so. And again, the form can be used uh, for that. And if you've been used to giving cash and perhaps you haven't been for the last 18 months, then perhaps you could play some catch up at some stage. Now, we don't know, um, I have to say, I don't know what the best way of taking up a collection is. Is it, is it bags? Is it plates? Is it a contactless thing at the back of church? I have no idea. I pray for the wisdom of Solomon because it all depends on your generation. I tend not to carry around any cash at the moment. I've got Apple Pay on my phone, which works very well indeed. So if you've got any ideas, do let me know. Now, going to our passage, it is a glorious description of generous giving. Paul writes to the church in Corinth that he wants them to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Because in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Because I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. And we learn from them that this giving generously is a grace that comes from God. For the church, in, uh, in the midst of a severe trial, still managed to give generously. In fact, out of their extreme poverty, their overflowing joy welled up in rich generosity. And they gave beyond their ability. It's really remarkably challenging for us. So challenging, it actually makes me feel uncomfortable. I wonder if I can ever imagine being so joyfully generous. But Paul uses the Macedonian church as an example to the Corinthian church. See that you also excel in this grace of giving. And so it's an encouragement for us today. May we too be blessed with the grace of giving. But of course, the heart of the question is why? Why give? Paul writes in chapter 9, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So if we're generous, God will be generous with us. But at the heart of this is Jesus. Now, I was walking with someone who uh, is like a mentor to me, and I confided on our dog walk. I, I struggle with stewardship Sundays, stewardship appeals. He said, Will, just tell them about Jesus. You can't go wrong. So where is Jesus in our passage? Well, here's the clue. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. They wanted to be part of it, to share in serving the Lord's people. Now, why would a poverty-stricken church be filled with joy at the idea of giving away more than they should do? What is it that inspires such generosity, a joy-filled generosity? And the answer has to be is that they understood God's generosity to them. It is because God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And then um, in Romans, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person somebody might possibly dare to die. <coughs> but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, My entire theology can be summed up in four words. Jesus died for me. 
Jesus died in our place, took the punishment we deserve so our relationship with God could be restored. The chains of sin are broken. Satan no longer has a hold over us and we're released to be who God has called us to be. It's such good news that surely we should respond. And you have. Just look around you. I've already mentioned the Open Doors project, the, the screens, there's, there's the, the staff team, the side chapel, re, you know, it's all around. Your generosity is all around in all our ministries. Now I want you to look at the tube map that you've all been given when you come in. Just look at it. The graphic designer who did this said to me, Will, I cannot believe how much is going on at your church. He, he just couldn't believe it. Take it in your hands. It's been a bit of a labor of love for me because it's quite complicated and um, it's taken me ages to do. And it's, it's precious. Not the paper, but what it represents. I've called it the journey of discovery. It's a picture of what God is doing through BBC, BPC. And there's so much to discover as we journey. Perhaps run a finger on one of the lines. Choose a line. And as you look at the stops, each stop has a leader. Some of you here lead some of those ministries. But each stop needs a team. Is there a stop where you could get off, I wonder? Perhaps you could pray about that. I know many of you serve so uh, generously already but there may be one or two people here for whom you're thinking about where could I get involved I know it's quite large but perhaps um, stick it up on your fridge with a bit of blue tack and pray about it whenever you open the fridge door where can I serve because our discipleship is a journey again another quote from Spurgeon he said conversion is a turning onto the right road the next thing to do is to walk on it. We start to walk down the right road, which is the journey of discipleship. And before too long, we're challenged over how we can respond to God's act of loving kindness. Just how loving and kind God's giving up of his son, Jesus Christ, was brought home to me on Thursday. I had the privilege of uh, praying with Tim Mullins. Many of you will remember Tim and Lucy. They worshipped at this at this congregation and he's the um, chaplain at Stowe School and he has a brain tumor that is borderline stage four so the prognosis is not good but we live in hope of a miracle it was staggering to see this man at peace despite what he is facing he was full of joy full of smiles and looking forward to meeting his Lord and Saviour, albeit he wished it wasn't going to be quite so soon. He demonstrated so powerfully the peace of God which passes all understanding. And this is a gift that we all, those who have made the decision to accept <laughs> Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, have been given through the grace of God. And surely it's only right that we respond in as generous a way as possible. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. And we pray, Lord, that you would encourage us to react to the act of incredible generosity that you gave your Son for us that you would help and guide us to pick up a place in church where we might serve and if appropriate to review our giving or to start giving to support the ministries here. And we ask all this through Jesus' name. Amen.
Do you believe and trust in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now Susan will come and lead our prayers of intercession. Almighty Father God, we thank you for your limitless generosity to us and ask that you inspire and encourage us as we attempt to be generous too. We pray for people who have fled their homes and desperately hope to find safety and security. Those struck by natural disaster, invading forces or chronic poverty. Loving God, we beg you to relieve their distress and to use us to help however we can. We pray that governments, and our government in particular, will offer refuge and relief, and that we will receive refugees with open hearts and minds. We pray for climate protesters, asking that they will turn their disruption into positive action and help all of us to examine how we can reduce our impact on your beautiful world. We pray for politicians and climate experts preparing for COP26, that they will approach the talks with determination to make a difference. We pray for those nations who rely on fossil fuels for everything they do, that we rich nations who caused the carbon problem in the 19th and 20th centuries will face up to our responsibilities and share expertise and resources with all nations. We pray for the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines and the prevention of waste. We pray for everyone as COVID regulations are relaxed, that we will treat each other with respect and care. We pray for teenagers and their parents, weighing up the evidence about vaccinating 12 to 15 year olds. We pray for the silencing <coughs> of those who spread unsubstantiated rumor and doubt. We pray for our government balancing the books, for households facing rising bills and falling incomes, for employers keeping their businesses going, for major projects that may become too costly to continue, and those employed in such areas. We pray for wisdom at every level, those dealing with billion pound responsibilities and those who calculate their shopping bill in pennies. We pray that we, will be generous, recognising all that you have done for us, seeking your guidance in how we should distribute our time, energies, attention and money, being the cheerful givers who bring you joy. Amen. And now let's stand to share the peace with one another. <clears throat> we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's share with one another a sign of God's peace.
And if you didn't just see, Judith did just get up and walk out with Ron, which feels like it is an answer to prayer. Um, so praise God. And we do pray, Lord, that she would be able to see um, a good doctor who would help them work out what has just happened in this service. Um, and we thank you for the people who are around her, who could pray for her and care for her. Amen. Amen. Let's sing the Offertory Hymn. Now thank we all our God. We are reintroducing the Common Cup this morning for those who would like to um, have it, but the shot glasses will be placed on the table um, if you would rather use that. And how it will work is this. Will is going to give um, the bread to the choir, and while he is doing that, I will come to the front to give wafers to people who would like to have the common cup, and Jerry will come and give the common cup. Yes, I hope that that makes sense, but it's completely up to you what you choose to do this morning. Wonderful. Let's start. Yes, yeah, so the people who want the common cup come up while we're giving to the choir. Everybody else, you will come up as we have done in other weeks, and then you will go back and we will consume together. If you're having the common cup, you will not consume together because you will have consumed already. Okay, great, great. Okay. It's just always such a joy to gather together. Um, the Lord is here. 
His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave himself up for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favor on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick. Let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread and share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.
the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through christ our lord amen and now we will have our closing hymn to god be the glory your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.